Hi there, my name is Dar and in this video, I'll guide you step by step through the process of designing a Shopify store. If you have never built or designed a Shopify store before, the entire process can seem overwhelming. However, this video will make it much easier for you as I'll walk you through each step of designing your store, exploring all the settings and options available. This ensures that you cover everything you need to know and understand what you can achieve with the Shopify editor to create a stunning end result. I'll also list all the steps we'll cover in the video description below so you can easily navigate to specific parts if needed. Let's not waste any more time and let's dive right into the tutorial. Alright, so the first step is to sign up for your Shopify account and I recommend to use my referral link which you can find down below in the description to sign up. This will take you to my Shopify landing page which will allow you to extend your free trial for an additional one month for just one dollar per month. So you essentially get one month of using Shopify with all the features for only one dollar per month which is a great offer and it gives you enough time to get everything ready for the launch of your store. So make sure to use that first link in the description and once you're on this page just type in your email address and then click on start free trial. Then here Shopify is going to ask you a few questions about what type of business or shop you're trying to build. So if you want, you can answer those questions here, but it really doesn't matter what you answer because the Shopify version we're getting is the same for everybody. So what I like to do is just click on skip all here at the bottom. Here just select your country and click on next. Then we need to create our Shopify account. So you can either use your Apple, Facebook or Google account or just sign up using an email, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to choose this option and then decide on a password and click on create Shopify account. Now your Shopify store is being created. Now that our store is created, we are in the Shopify dashboard where the first thing I like to do is activate the extended one month trial. So to do that, we're going to go to the bottom right and click on this black box and then click on select a plan. Then to start out, the basic plan is going to be more than enough and we can see here we get it for $1 per month for the first one month. So let's click on choose basic. And once everything is filled in, we can go ahead and click on subscribe. So now that our extended trial is activated, we have full access to all the features for one month. So now we can start designing our store. The first thing we want to do is choose a theme for our store. So let's head over to online store and this will take us to the themes. And as you can see, the current theme that is already installed is the dawn theme. But if you want to change it, you can scroll down and then you can click on visit theme store. And then here you have a library of all kinds of different themes you can use and install on your store. So you can browse those themes if you want to. Just keep in mind that a lot of these themes are actually paid themes. So you're going to have to pay in order for you to install them on your store. If you're just starting out, I would just stick to the free themes and you can just filter them by clicking on the free filter here on the left side. And that leaves you with all of the different free themes that you can use with the Shopify plan. And if you want to check them out, just click on the theme and then click on view demo store and then you can just click through the entire store and see how all of the pages look like. And if you find one that you like, you can just click on try theme on the top, right? And now your theme will be installed on your store. And it takes us back to the Shopify dashboard where under theme library, we can see an overview of all the themes that we have. And currently the new theme that we have just looked at is being installed. Now the new theme is installed and if you actually want to use it, you're going to have to click on publish and then again, click on publish. And now the theme has switch from the default theme, which is the dawn theme to the new one that we have just added, which is called refresh. Now in this video, I'm actually going to use the default themes, which is the dawn themes. It's one of the best they have. And I see a lot of successful Shopify stores just using this dawn theme. So that's what we're going to use in this video as well. Now to switch back to the default theme, I'm just going to click on publish for the dawn theme and confirm. And now it's switched back to the dawn theme and we can just get rid of this one right now. I just wanted to show you how to actually install another theme. So now we are back with the default theme and now we're going to start customizing our store. So let's click on customize and this will take use into the store editor where currently we are on the home page as we can see here. If you want to switch pages, we can just click here and then switch to any of the pages that we'd like to edit. And then here on the left side, we can see an overview of all of the elements on our page. So on every page on your store, there's going to be the header area, which you can see here. Currently in the header, we have an announcement bar here at the top. Then we have the header, which is just menu, our store name or the logo, and then the shopping cart there at the right side. And then between the header and the footer, which is all the way at the bottom, this part here. 
Here usually we have some links to some legal pages. Maybe an email sign up section and then also some icons depending on what you'd like to add. And then in between the header and the footer, we have just the content of the page. So on the home page currently, and by default, they've put an image banner in here and then also a featured collection just showing off a few products on our store. So our entire store is gonna be built out of different types of sections and then within those sections, we have different types of elements. So for example, here we have on the image banner section and then inside we have a text block as well. And then we have the button block, which we can see here. You can also add more blocks by just clicking here and then we can add some more text or we can also add more sections. So when we scroll down and let's say go and add a section between this section here at the top, the image banner and the featured products, we just click on the plus icon here and then we have some different types of sections that we can add. So for example, we can add some text like with the rich text section and then the section will be added and we can just click on it and start editing the content here. Now you can also move sections up or down. The way I like to do it is just go to the left side overview and then just drag and drop the section to wherever we want it to be on our page. And here now you can see an overview of the page on the right side. Whenever you want to delete a specific section on your page, just hover over the section here on the left side and click on the trash icon or just select the section. And then on the bottom right, you can see remove section. Just click here and then the section will be removed. So now that you're familiar with how the pages are structured on your Shopify store, let's start designing your store. Now the first thing we're going to do is add a slideshow here at the top of the home page. Now the first thing we're going to do is add a slideshow here at the top of the home page. So you can also use this image banner and then just add one image. But in my case, I'm just going to delete this entire section. And then I'm going to click on add section and I'm going to look for a slideshow section. So I'm going to choose the slideshow and then it will be inserted right here. So now the featured products are above the slideshow and I actually want to change that. So let's go back to the overview and then drag and drop the section to the top of the home page. Now, in order for us to actually add the content, the images to the section, let's select it by clicking on it. And then for the first slide, let's click on select image. So for this store, I've already prepared a few images that I want to add to this slideshow. So I'm just gonna drag and drop all of the images into this field. Then once they're uploaded, I'm gonna select the first image and click on done. And now when we go back to the overview here on the left side, we can see that we have one image here in the first slide. And I actually wanna have four different images. So four slides. I'm gonna click on add slide and then go back once again and add another slide. So I have four slides here that I can add. So let's add the second image by going to the second one, select image. And now let's choose this one here. Click on done. And then I'm gonna go to the third one, select image, choose this one, done. And go back once again, go to the fourth slide, select the image, and now let's choose this one, done. Now let's go back again. And now we can see we have four different slides. And we can also see how they change when you click on this arrow here at the bottom. We can see they basically change here. So we have four different ones. And the next step is going to be changing up this section here. So now we are on the first slide and the first thing I wanna do is kind of change up the style. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck this option here. Show container on desktop. And then I'm gonna change the desktop content position. I'm gonna put this in the bottom left corner right here. So let's click on bottom left. And then I'm also gonna do desktop content alignment to the left, which makes this white. And then we can change the text so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste some taglines here that I prepared for the heading. So I'm gonna paste that in here. And then I'm not gonna use the subheadings. I'm just gonna leave this here. And then for the button label, I'm gonna just change it to shop now. And then whenever you add a button, you also wanna make sure that the button actually links somewhere. So under button link here, let's choose a page. So let's just send this to the products. Let's say all products. And now the button is filled out as you can see here. And I actually wanna make the text here a bit smaller. So for the heading size, I'm gonna change it to small. And there we go. That's the look I wanted to go for. And now we wanna basically do the same thing for all of the other slides as well. So now I'm done with all of these slides that I wanna have here at the top of the home page. Obviously it's up to you what kind of content you wanna add here. I recommend to just add some of your best sellers. Or if you have some sale going on, you can just put a banner here about your sale. Or maybe show some new collections here and then have the buttons go to those specific pages. Now we're gonna move on to the next section of our homepage, which is gonna be featuring a few of our products. Now again, it's up to you what kind of products you wanna feature here. Usually what many stores do is kind of feature their new arrivals or maybe their best sellers. 
or maybe if it's a one product store you want to have just a featured product section so by clicking on add section you can add a featured product section and then people can buy that specific product directly on the home page but now i'm going to show you how to add products to your store and how to add collections so there will be actually your products displayed here on the home page so to add our products to our store we're going to have to go back to the shopify dashboard so now in your dashboard let's go to products and then here let's click on add product and here we just want to go from top to bottom and add all the information about the product that you're selling so as an example i'm just going to add a sweatshirt as a product so i'm just going to type in sweatshirt and then for the description you want to obviously also give some more information about the product what makes it special maybe some specific measure as well depending on what you're selling you can also use this generate text and ai option to kind of have ai write a text or a description for you if you want that then under media it's very important that you add high quality images of the products that you're selling a lot of your store design will come down to the kind of quality of images you have that you can add as content on your store so i'm just going to drag and drop in a few images of this product and then here once they're uploaded you can also rearrange them however you want to then under pricing you can just type in the price here so let's say this is going to be 79 and then you can always add a compare price and this is going to be shown as a price that will be kind of striked through so kind of like now it used to be 99 and now it's just 99 then you can also add some information about your inventory and also if you want to charge shipping based on weight you can add the weight of the product here and if you have variants like different sizes or colors or any types of variants then you definitely want to set those up here under variants once you have entered all the information about your product let's click on save and now when we go back here we can see that under products we have our first product added and to add more of our products we just go to add product again and then go through the exact same steps so now i've added a few more products to my store and i also want to create a few collections so when we come over here and click on collections then here we can create different categories for the different types of products that we're selling currently there's like a home page collection i actually don't need this one so i'm just going to select it here and i'm going to go to the three dots and click on delete collection and confirm and then what i want to do is create a collection for men's clothing and then also for women's clothing so let's click on create collection and then here let's create one for women first so i'm just going to type in women and then under collection type i'm going to leave it on manual so i can manually add products to this collection you can also have it automated and then you would just be working with tags so it could give specific tags like for a hoodie you would give it a tag hoodie and then also women depending on who this hoodie is for and what kind of style it is and then you can serate automations so that your products will be automatically assigned to specific collections but now i'm going to make it simple and just stick to the manual one and then we also want to add an image here for this collection so i'm going to go and look in my folder here and i prepared an image right here i'm just going to drag and drop that in so that people can see okay this is the women's collection then let's click on save and now i'm also going to collect a men's collection so i'm going to click on create another collection now i'm going to type in men and again we're going to stick to manual collection type and then add another collection image here and click on save now when we go back to our collections we can see we have a men's and a women's collection and i want to add a third collection for all of the products that i want to display directly on the home page so for example i could display all of the new products that we have so the new arrivals so let's again go to create collection and then i'm going to type in new arrivals of course you can also just add maybe a winter collection you want to display on the page or maybe a best sellers collection whatever makes sense for your store so then i'm just going to also add an image here and then click on save and go back and now we have our three collections but as you can see we have no products in our collection so far so the next step would be to add our products to these collections so let's go back to our products and then let's select all of the products that are for men so in my case this would be these ones right here and then once they're selected i'm going to go to the three dots at the bottom and click on add to collections and in this case i'm going to add them to the men's collection and click save and then i'm going to do the same thing for the women's products so again just mark them all go to the three dots add to collections and then choose the women's collection and then let's just add a few more products to let's say the new arrivals collection let's just add maybe these right here and go to add collections and then add these to the new arrivals and click save so now we have added all of our products and also we've created a few collections to work with so now we can go back to the other tab which is the shopify editor so we're back here on the home page and right here we have a featured products section and this section will just show some of our products now what i want to do is i want to show my new arrivals collection right here below this header or below this main section at the top 
So I'm gonna delete this featured collection by clicking on the trash icon and then I'm gonna click on the add section and I'm gonna look for featured collection right here. And now I have to tell Shopify what kind of collection I want to feature here on the home page. So let's scroll down on the left side menu and click on select collection. And in my case, I wanna add the new arrivals collection. So I'm gonna check this one and then click on select. And now we can see that the collection that is shown are all of the products that we have put into the new arrivals collection. We can also change the title here. So I would also change this to new arrivals and we can also add a description, for example. And now the next section that I wanna add to my home page is I wanna show the men's and the women's collection. So people who get to the store, they can click on men's or women's depending on what they're shopping for. So let's go back to the overview here and then below my featured collection, I'm gonna add another section. And in this case, I'm gonna add a collection list so it will display the different types of collections we have. So let's click here and then we can see there will be three different collections displayed. In my case, I only wanna show two. So I'm gonna just decrease the number of columns on desktop to two. And now we only have two different collections. So I'm gonna select the first collection by just clicking on it and then click on select collection. And I'm gonna use the women's one first. Select and then also go to the second one and then select the men's collection. And now for some reason, there's still a collection down here. So let's go back to the overview here. And then under collection list, let's just delete this third collection by clicking the trash icon. And now we're just left with these two collections. And maybe let's also change the title here. So let's go back to the section, women's and the men's collection. Let's also delete this title here, or maybe change it to something else. So instead of collections, let's just say, find your style. And now when people actually click on these collections, they will get to the women's collection or the men's collection. So maybe let's try it out, let's click on it. And then you can see this is all of the products that we have added to the women's collection. And this will directly go to the collection page. So let's go back to our home page by switching pages here at the top. And this will be like the basic structure of like a fashion store. So you have some lifestyle images here at the top, like this slideshow that we have added. You have a specific collection that you can display here. And then you also have your main collections like, for this store it's gonna be a women's and a men's collection. And then if you want to, you can also add more things like if you want to tell a story or if you want to just give some more information about how your products are made. There is good sections for this kind of content. You can just click on add section here and then add the section that would make the most sense for what you like to communicate. So now let's move on and take a look at how to customize the header of our store. The header is always on top of all of the pages on your store. And currently we have two sections in the header. We have the announcement bar, which is this one here at the top and then we have the header itself. So the announcement bar is usually used for announcement as the name says. So for example, if you have a Black Friday sale going on, what you could do is just change the text here to something like use code, let's say C20, 30% off or something like that. And then people will see that and they will be more likely to actually buy something on your store. You can also type in something like limited time only or just something that will get people to actually purchase something. Now you can also delete this entire bar if that's not something you wanna do you can just click on the trash icon here and then the entire announcement bar will be gone. So now let's look at the actual header section where we have the store name or the logo section where you put your logo. Then you have the menu and then you have the search bar and the cart. So the first thing I wanna do is add my logo here to the top of the store. So let's select our header and then let's scroll all the way down and go to the theme settings, then scroll further down and then you can see where you can put in your logo. So I'm just gonna drag and drop in a logo I quickly created in Canva so I'm just gonna drag and drop that in here and this will automatically put in the logo to our header. So once it's uploaded, we can also change some settings. So we can just drag the slider here to the right, make it a bit larger if we want to, maybe we do want pixels and then we can also change the layout of the entire header. So let's scroll back up and then maybe play around with the settings a bit. So something we could do here is change the logo position. So what I like to do is just actually use middle center and then we have the logo here in the center and the menu here on the right side. If you wanna have a bit more of a minimalistic style here for your header, you could also change the menu type to a drawer. And then you just get this hamburger icon where you can click and then... The menu will open up here on the left side. I'm just gonna actually use the drop down one, the default one. And now I wanna show you how to customize this main menu here in the header. So to customize this, we're gonna have to go back to the Shopify dashboard, which we still have open here in another tab. So once here, we're gonna go to online store and then click on navigation. Once here, we wanna click on main menu. This is the one at the top of your store. And then here we can edit the menu. So for example, I don't wanna have a home link. So I'm just gonna click on delete and confirm. 
Then we can also delete the catalog page if you want to. And then we can also add new items like, for example, I want to add some of my collections. So I'm just going to click on add menu item. And then I'm going to click here and go to collections. And I'm going to choose the men's collection. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And also choose the women's collection. And to change the order of the menu items, we can just drag and drop whatever we want to change here. So I want to have men, women, and then contact. So let's click on save menu. And now we can go back to the editor, save the page. And now when we reload the page, we should be able to see the new menu here at the top. Now let's move on and go to the footer of the website, which is all the way at the bottom. So right here, we can click on it. And then we see all the options here on the right side. So by default, they have added this email sign up section where people can type in their email address and then you can send them out your newsletter or specific promo codes or something like that. If you're collecting emails on your store, I recommend to actually offer something like 20% discount on the first order. So actually people will have an incentive to sign up. Just asking people to subscribe to your emails, that's probably not going to work that well. So for this store, I'm not going to collect any emails yet. So what I'm going to do is just turn this option off here on the right side. I'm going to uncheck show email sign up and then this will disappear. And then here we can enter all of our social media links. So to make these social media icons appear, we have to just copy and paste in our links to these fields. So for the Facebook profile, we just paste in our Facebook URL. And then for the Instagram, we paste in our Instagram, YouTube, TikTok and so on. And just by doing that, these social media icons will appear here in the footer. And when people click on those icons, they will go to the links that you put in here. Now let's scroll back up to the different options. And then we have the country and region selector. So if you have multiple countries you're selling to, then you want to make sure that this is enabled as well. So people can change the country that they're located in. Then we have the same thing for language selector. And then we have the payment methods as well. So by default, Shopify always shows you different payment methods. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually activate the policy links right here. So we want to check this option, but we haven't set up our policies yet. So we need our shipping policy, our return policy and so on. So that's what we're going to now, we're going to set up these pages. And then once we have done that, they will appear in the footer as well. So to set up our policies, let's first save our changes and then let's go back to the Shopify dashboard we have still open here in the other tab. And then we want to go to settings all the way at the bottom left. And then we want to look for policies. It's right here at the bottom. And then here you can simply enter all of your policies. Now, if you need some guidance on how to create your policy, then I recommend just use the templates of Shopify. When you click on create from template, then they will put in a template for a basic return and refund policy. And what I recommend is to just read through this policy and then make any changes to your specific store and business. Then you can do the same thing with the privacy policy, with the terms of service. And then you also have a shipping policy. There is no template for this one. So you want to write that yourself. Just tell people how long it will take for them to receive the product. And then we also have the contact information. Just put all that in here. And once all these policies are filled out, we can just click on save, then close the settings. And now let's go back to the Shopify editor. And then when we reload the page, we can see that all of the policy links are visible here at the bottom of the footer because we have activated the show policy option for the footer. Now I want to also show you how to get rid of the powered by Shopify text here at the bottom because it's also something that is a bit annoying to do, but it's actually quite easy. So let's click on save and then let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go to online store and then go to the three dots and go to edit default theme content. Then here let's search for links and then under links you can see powered by Shopify. What we want to do here is just click into this field and then just hit enter. So we have a space here and then click save. Now, when we go back to the editor and reload the page, then scroll all the way down, we can see that the powered by Shopify is now gone. So we just have the copyright and then your store name. Now we need to change the name of our store to our actual brand name. So we can see that here at the bottom as well. So let's do that now by going back to the dashboard, then going to settings at the bottom left. And then here under store details, we can click on this pen icon and then here change the name of our store. In this case, this would be coconut, I think is the name of this brand. So let's click on save. And now when we go back to our editor and reload the page again, we should see at the bottom that the name of our store is now visible here. And when you click on it, it'll just get to the home page. So now we're done with the header and the footer of our store. Now we can also go into the theme settings and look at a couple of things there. 
So to get to the theme settings, we can go to the left side on this gear icon and then you have all kinds of different options you can go through. So for example, under logo, we can see we already added our logo here to the header. But one thing that we haven't added yet is our favicon image. So if you don't know what that is, you can just go to the three dots here and then click on view and this will open up your store in a new tab. And here you can see in the tab window here, there's a small icon and this is the favicon. So we can customize how that looks. And usually that's just kind of the logo of the brand. So what I like to do is just add a square version of the logo. So I've prepared one for the store. I'm just gonna drag and drop that in. It's basically just the first letter of this logo. So once that's added, I can just click on save. And now when I go back to the store, and then when we reload the page, we can see that uh, this icon is now visible here at the top of the browser. Then when we go back to the theme settings and go to the colors, we can also change all of the different colors for all of the color schemes that this template has. So if you want to go into it, you can, I usually just leave it as it is because it's already kind of optimized. Same thing with typography. Here you can change all the settings, all the different fonts that you wanna use for your website. And then you have some more options like animations, buttons, styles, and stuff like that. I usually don't spend too much time in these options because like I said, it's already kind of optimized by the theme that we're using. So now we're done with the main parts of designing our store. We mainly focused on adding things to the home page because Shopify kind of already optimizes all the other pages based on the theme that you've chosen. Like for example, if we go to our product page, then we can see that this is what it looks like. So here you can see all the information that we give when we add our products. Then you have here the product images and usually you can see also some related products here at the bottom based on the tags you give your products. Now, because I haven't done that, you can't see any products, but just keep in mind that you have a lot more customization options. So for example, you can add another section here at the bottom to your product pages. So there's a lot more things that you can do, but we just covered kind of the basic things that you need to do when starting a new Shopify store and you just wanna keep things simple. Also make sure to check out your store on a mobile device because most people nowadays are actually shopping on their mobile phone. So I wanna make sure everything looks great on mobile phones as well. Just go through all the pages and just see if everything looks good. Usually Shopify does a great job at optimizing everything for mobile so there's nothing you need to do. But sometimes you just wanna change something up because on mobile it doesn't look the way you intended it to look. Now before we go ahead and launch our store, there are some very important settings that we need to look at and things that we need to set up in order for us to start selling products on our store. So let's head over to our Shopify dashboard and then from here, let's open up our settings. So under store details, we've already set up our store name, but we also wanna make sure everything else is correct as well, like the billing information, the store currency, and then also like the units of your store. Then a very important thing is setting up our payment systems. So under payments, we can set up Shopify payments, which will allow our visitors to check out using a credit card, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Shop Pay, whatever they want. So just click on complete account setup, then fill in all of your information so that people will be able to check out on your store. If you want to, you can also add PayPal checkout as well. Then let's go to shipping and delivery. This is where you wanna set up your shipping rates for you to ship the products to the customer. So there's a lot of options here with Shopify. We can have a general shipping rate, for domestic shipping, international shipping, or you can also have multiple shipping profiles for different kinds of products, or you wanna add shipping based on weight or based on quantity. You can all set this up here in the shipping and delivery menu. Then under taxes and duties, you wanna make sure to set up your taxes that you need to collect correctly based on where you're shipping to and based on where you're selling from. So make sure to take a look at this as well. And now we also wanna go to domains and connect a custom domain to our store. Currently, this is our domain and you can also see it right here. It's just a Shopify domain and we want to change that to our own custom branded domain. And we can buy our domain directly here on Shopify or if you already have one, you can also connect it by clicking here. But the easiest way is just to buy it here by clicking buy new domain. And then you want to type in the brand name or the domain you're trying to go for. So I might look for larafashion.com or something like that. I probably would try and go for a.com domain. And once you find one, just click on buy and go through the checkout process and then domain will be automatically connected to your store. There's nothing more that you need to do. Then, if you're selling internationally, it might also make sense for you to go to languages and then add more languages through your store. Shopify makes it pretty simple to translate your store into other languages. Just click here and then select the language you wanna translate your store in and then go through this process. As you can see here, 
Shopify says that increases your conversion by 13% for international customers. So this is definitely something that you want to do if you're selling internationally. So now we have looked at the most important settings. So let's close the settings here. And now we're basically ready to publish our store. Currently our store is not published yet, so no one can access it but us. You can see that here it says your online store is password protected and we can remove the password. I hope this video helped you learning how to design a Shopify store. If it did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.